This is how I perform a health check on my new promo campaign. I should have really gotten a real doctor's outfit for it. I don't think these fake glasses are cutting it. Hey, it's John here at Hyped It. I'm no real doctor, but in this video, I'm gonna perform a health check on my new promo campaign that I launched a week ago for my latest release on Spotify. I like performing these health checks to make sure I'm getting the most out of my campaign. Since I'm spending money on Facebook and Instagram ads for it, I wanna make sure I'm really getting the most listeners and streams and fans out of it for my music. So I'm gonna share with you what the exact metrics are that I'm looking at for my music, how I'm looking those up, and then what kind of trends I'm looking for in these metrics. All I gotta do is take you over to my screen. So let's hop right in. I'm locked into Hyped It right now because the health check for my campaign starts on my dashboard. So in Hyped It, I'm looking at the ad campaigns dashboard. And at the top here, I can see the campaign for all night, which is the one that I wanna take a look at. And over here on the right, what I see are the all time stats for this campaign. And I see the engagement rate here. I see cost per click of 22 cents. You can see the amount I've spent, the number of visits, number of clicks that I've received. Now, one thing I wanna mention right up front, I'm gonna come back to this later in this video. In this campaign, I'm running an experiment for something new. And this is starting a campaign with a high budget. I've had so many questions from artists that have responded to my video where I described that I launched all my campaigns with $5 a day with the question, hey, but John, if I launch with a higher campaign budget, couldn't it mean that my campaign optimizes a lot faster and I get the benefit of my promotion sooner? So I'm testing this here right now. This is an extreme outlier. Usually all my campaigns start at $5 a day. In this campaign here, I'm running this as an experiment. But the analysis and the metrics I'm gonna look at are always gonna be the same, whether it's $5 a day or 20 bucks a day. So my main takeaway on this screen here is the cost per click, 22 cents. It's good. In fact, it's very good. I have a lot of campaigns that start closer to 30 cents and then sort of optimize down over time. This one started relatively low and it could just mean that the track is a relatively good track. And I should highlight again, that the cost per click is relative to a lot of different factors, such as the music genre, the amount of data that my pixel has already collected over years, my country settings, the quality of the song and what have you. So if you're looking at this and your cost per click is 30 cents or 40 or 50 or 60 or some other number, that's perfectly fine. When I say 22 is a good number, then I'm comparing it to other campaigns that I've had. So 22 is good relative to a lot of the campaigns that I run. And this is how I recommend you analyze your campaigns. Don't compare it to my numbers compared to other numbers that you have gotten on other campaigns. But I really want to see how this campaign is trending because this is how I can tell whether this one is a keeper. And I'm going to let it run for 28 days anyway because so many things can happen during that initial optimization phase. But I wanna see if this campaign is already on its way to improving the performance. And the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna come over here on the dashboard and I click on the analytics icon for the song and I open up the analytics. And I'm gonna open this up to uh, all time. Now this track has been out for a week. It was released last week, Thursday, and I'm recording this video on Friday now. So technically I guess it's, it's one additional day but that's a good time to check in and see how this campaign is doing. And there are two metrics that I'm really, really interested in to see how are they improving over time. One is the cost per click and the other one is the engagement. The cost per click, I wanna see going down, the engagement, I wanna see going up. So let me start with the cost per click. And I'm actually gonna modify the date again because now it shows me today's date and today's day is obviously not complete and the data hasn't been completely compiled yet. So I'm gonna do custom range from Thursday to Thursday. This way I don't get a partial day in there. So what I can see is that when this campaign started and I'm looking at the red line, it came out of the gate at 20 cents per click and the next day it has 29 and then 20, this was 21, 21, 25, 21, and then yesterday, 16. All right, so I do see a trend down, and this is what I love to see. I'd say this campaign is a bit of an outlier here. I usually don't have campaigns that start at 20 cents per click. This is really good. And again, it may have something to do with just how the, the track is being received by the audience that I'm putting it in front of. Most likely would be, you know, a campaign comes out of the gate, let's say at 30 cents for me. 
and then from 30 cents you know to the mid 20s and now below 20 here that's a line of improvement so i like what's happening on the cost per click basis now i'm going to come up to the top of the graph here i'm going to switch it from cost per click to link clicks per visits so that shows me the engagement rate of the song the engagement rate measures how many fans who arrive at the smart link click through to Spotify. The higher that ratio is, usually the better are the results that I'm getting in Spotify. And I can see that this gate came out here at 10.4% on the initial day and then jumped to 20%, 35, 44. It wobbles around a little bit, which is typical, right? So when I say I'm looking for a certain metric to improve, I don't expect it to improve every single day. I expect it to be a zigzag line. Some days are gonna be up, some days are gonna be down. But what I wanna see is an overall trend that heads in a specific direction. And then so this campaign continued at 44 here, then we had 45 and yesterday we had over 50%. So this couldn't be any more obvious. The engagement rate is clearly improving. And I am gonna admit I'm surprised by how strong this signal is. Most of my campaigns usually have a much lower improvement rate on the engagement in their initial days or in their initial weeks. So I will say maybe this could be related to the higher budget. I'm not 100% certain on it because I haven't obviously run a split test here where I tested this campaign at five bucks a day and at 20 bucks a day. But I will say this improvement is unusually picture perfect. And so for now, I'm just gonna take note of it and obviously it established this campaign as a campaign that performs really well. Here I can see which of my audiences performed the best. Deep House is a winner here right now. David Morales does really well. Mark Knight does really well. So clearly some three top performers here. So I like that. And this is just a data point that I like to look up because it can help me with future campaigns. If I release another song which sounds similar to this one, I can look back and say, hey, you know, Deep House and David Morales and Mark Knight performed really well. So I wanna make sure I carry those audiences forward into new campaigns. But now enough with hype that's visits and clicks and engagement rates are all well and good. But at the end of the day, what really counts is what's happening in Spotify. And so next I'm gonna jump over into Spotify for Artists and I brought up All Night here right now and let's see what's been happening during the first week of the song over here. So I have it switched to last 28 days. And so far the track has attracted a little over 4,000 streams and a little over 1,600 listeners. The streams per listener ratio is 2.4. So I like that. That's a clear signal for repeat streams. It's been added to 461 playlists and it has received 381 saves. So another checkpoint that I like in Spotify for artists is my safe rate. And for the safe rate, what I'm doing is I'm taking the number of saves and I'm dividing it by the number of listeners. In this particular case, it looks like it's a little over 20%. So I'd say that is an okay safe rate. That's not the best safe rate I've ever had, but if over a little over 20% of fans who listen to the song save it that's something i can be satisfied with even though i've seen other artists with much much stronger safe rates but okay it is what it is and when it comes to the velocity of the results i can see that this track was released on thursday so this is what happened on release day results were just kicking off then we have friday this is where release radar kicks in so results were a lot stronger and then remained at an elevated level basically all the way through yesterday, which is kind of exciting because I do expect another release radar bump that will happen today because I'm recording this on Friday, but then obviously the data will only be visible tomorrow. All right, that's it on this graph here. But now what I want to take a look at are some of these other tabs here. So source of streams, let's look at where those streams are coming from. And this is exciting news for a new release in my opinion. So. I'm always wondering, hey, how many of the streams that this song gets are from my campaign or they are from fans that come back to the song again or from fans that I have because they've seen prior campaigns of mine and became sort of John Gold fans or started following it in my playlist or come from the algorithm. So in my head, I'm dividing the streams that I'm actively promoting for this track where I'm literally paying for the promotion in order to get those listeners into Spotify and which of the streams that listeners come to me for free just as a result of having built a real audience that engages with my music or of course the algorithm. So I can see right now that about a quarter of all streams come from the algorithm. All right, that's 
Probably going to be mostly release radar, but we're going to take a look at that in a minute. Then we have 1% Spotify editorial and personalized editorial playlist. So that's a very small amount. The track certainly hasn't been on any big editorial playlist, so not much to see here. Other listeners playlists. This is what my music promotion campaign falls under. And it shows up on the other listeners playlist because what I'm doing with this song is I'm running an ad automation campaign out of Hyped It using the Grow My Spotify playlist template. So I'm sending all the fan traffic with a deep link to the song on my This Is John Gold playlist. And actually, let me show you this real quick. So I'm running these Facebook and Instagram ads that are launched and managed out of Hyped It to send fan traffic to my This Is John Gold playlist. And then it goes to All Night, which I put in the second position on this playlist. And I put it in the second position because Beat Out My Heart for the last couple of months has been absolutely blowing me away and has been one of my best performing tracks. So I didn't want to displace my best performer, but I moved it right into second position. And because I'm hosting this playlist as my John Gold listener profile. So this is not John Gold the artist. This is John Gold the listener on Spotify from the perspective of me as an artist. This is a, a third party playlist. It's the playlist of another listener. And that's why the music promotion shows up in here. Now I have 30% here that comes from listeners own playlists and library. I find this particularly exciting because that means it's listeners who have engaged with my music, added it to their playlist or saved it to their liked songs library and then have come back to further engage with the track. So 30% of streams come from that and then 21% here from my artist profile on Spotify, which again is something I'm not promoting. So those will be listeners who have come back to check out my music. So what does this all mean? In summary, it means that 20% of all the results, all the streams that I've gotten for this track are based on my promotional effort. But 80% of the streams, which is essentially everything else, are streams that I'm getting for free from Spotify and from my fans that have previously found my music and come back to my music to check it out. I've been notified of a new release. And so that's really exciting. And just a reminder that there's such a tremendous payoff to building this kind of engaged fan base. Because if you think about it, even if I hadn't promote this track at all, a lot of this other traffic here may have still happened. So that's pretty exciting. But now let's break down a little bit further from which playlist these results are coming in. So I'm gonna click on playlists over here and I can see that about a thousand streams are coming from release radar. So that's in the first week of the release radar cycle. I expect this number to go up because there are still three weeks of release radar left on this release. Then I have This Is John Gold here. So that contributed 774 streams to the total count on the song. And then all these other playlists here are going to be primarily playlists of fans that added the song to these playlists. And usually what I do, I just scroll down this list to see if there are any other editorial playlists in here that the song's getting early exposure on. Uh, this is an interesting one here. So this is John Gold. That's the one Spotify made for me. So I have two This is John Gold. This is my own and this is the one Spotify made for me. And it looks like some streams coming in from there. And then I have radio here. So 33 streams. Not big exposure yet and that's fine. But it means that in its first week, Spotify has already recognized the song and picked it up in radio and is testing it. And radio has the capacity to become massive. So if radio really works, it can add tens of thousands of streams to a song. So that's exciting to see. And what I'm really curious about is whether that higher budget pushes the song onto Discover Weekly faster. So usually at a $5 a day budget, I get on Discover Weekly in the fourth week. So after three weeks of campaign or sometimes after four weeks of campaign, so right around a month into the campaign. And with this higher budget, I'm curious if this happens faster this time. But if I scroll down here, I see on repeat, and then these are all fan playlists. So I don't see Discover Weekly here yet. Yes, so doesn't seem to be any Discover Weekly yet. All right, that's okay. Cool, that usually completes about the health check that I do for my campaign after one week. In Hyped It, I made sure that I like what's going on with the cost per click and I like what's going on with the engagement rate. And in Spotify for Artists, I made sure that the track is in fact getting lots of listeners and streams from my campaign and that because it is an engaged audience, I am getting this multiplier effect going where fans save the track and then come back and I get early algorithmic pickup, not just from release radar, but from the playlists that are really scalable such as Radio and Discover Weekly. So this looks all good. Now in this case though, because I'm running the $20 experiment, there's one other analysis that I want to do. Spotify has this comparison feature here where you can compare the first seven days or 28 days of a release to the same period on another release. 
And so what I want to do is I want to see how does this release compare to my last two prior releases that came out two weeks ago and then four weeks ago, because I'm wondering if I'm seeing a big difference here in Spotify for artists just because I launched with a $20 budget as opposed to a $5 budget. So all I'm going to do is click on the compare button here. I'm going to click into this text box and I'm going to find my prior release, which was this one here. I want to love you so and I'm going to look at the first seven days and now let me scroll down so I can see the curfew the blue one is for all night which is a new release $20 budget and the dotted line is I want to love you which is the prior release and that was launched with a $5 a day budget and so this is pretty interesting because for the first couple days these almost look identical right these two curves are really close together and it's really more towards the end of this period here where the lines sort of split and come apart. And especially here, I can see that all night is actually getting more than double the results. So I Want to Love You was at 277 streams here and all night was over 600 streams. So it's interesting that maybe there is something there with a higher budget, faster optimization and faster acceleration of results in Spotify. A little early to tell, but I'm gonna keep my eyes on this and I'm gonna come back and compare this for a longer period of time. But now, let me also compare this to the song that I released prior to this one, which was I Feel It. So this song was released four weeks before this one, All Night. And it's almost a similar picture here. The first couple of days, the results are remarkably close together despite the different budget, right? So the song All Night that's represented by the blue line here has a budget that is four times as high as the budget was for I Feel It with the dotted line. And clearly the results here weren't four times as big. But as the campaign matured and now a week in, I have a similar picture here where for All Night, I'm getting twice the result that I got for I Feel It. So interesting pattern between these two comparisons where All Night is in fact getting about double the results, but only double. It's not getting four times the results. Even though the budget is four times, the results seem to be double. So it's gonna be interesting to come back in a while, and I'm probably gonna do this at the 28 day mark to do this comparison again, and then see, hey, for the higher budget, how much more did I actually get relative to the $5 a day budget, which is my standard starting budget for a campaign. So far, I like what I'm seeing. I'm excited to see where all night goes and I'll update you on the performance of this promo campaign as it continues. With this said, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like, the subscribe and the bell icon below so you can get more videos like this on YouTube on how to get the most listeners, streams and fans for your music. And if you want me to take you behind the scenes and show you click by click how I'm actually setting up and running these promotion campaigns and how I have been using these campaigns to grow my music from zero to now millions of streams, then stay tuned for this little clip right here. Wanna get your music heard on Spotify with AI? I just launched a brand new video training program called the Spotify Grow Switch, where I show you how to start growing real listeners, real fans and real streams on Spotify in less than 10 minutes using software and AI. I've used the Spotify Grow Switch system to now grow my music to over 7 million streams and tens of thousands of monthly listeners on Spotify. This works for any music genre. It gets you real fans and listeners super fast and it's extremely easy to set up, literally just like flipping a spotlight switch for your music. Despite using AI, you don't need to know nothing about tech stuff in order to be successful with this. I've had the tremendous privilege of helping multiple tens of thousands of music artists grow their music on Spotify, many of which have grown to much larger numbers, lots more listeners, lots more streams than I have using the systems that I've taught. Makes me so proud of their success. And so if you wanna get more real listeners, real fans and real streams for your music fast using state of the art software and AI, then click the link below this video and check out the Spotify Grow Switch. I can't wait to help you grow your music on Spotify and I look forward to seeing you on the inside.